I recently joined a YouTube course to try and learn how to create videos. I've been trying to create a YouTube channel over however many years. I wasn't consistent while I was doing it. I was watching a Brandon Carter video about how fitness will make you more money and he goes into the psychology of how you'll feel happier, you'll feel accomplished, but if you're not tracking things on a daily basis, for example, with a spreadsheet or a fitness tracker to track your sleep, you won't be successful because just say, for example, if I track my calories for five days a week and I'm on point, I'm in a calorie deficit, 500 calories each, each day. On the weekends when I'm not tracking, I could easily erase the five days that I was on point because I could eat two days worth of food easily. If you gave me a whole pizza, whether it's from Pizza Hut or Costco, I could kill the whole thing easily in one sitting. 20 minutes was the amount of time that it took me when I tried it out last time. I was trying different ideas on YouTube of how to do uh, content creation. I came across this one channel. His name is Make Money With Matt. He has really good content. There was this one video of niches not to do. For example, compilations or just ripping people's videos or you, you have to use fair use in a sense that you have to talk about their video and also give your your feedback. And But technically they could co do a copyright claim against you. So I was thinking, should I use my own voice? Should I outsource it to other people? Because I could write my own script. I could do my own video editing. I could do my own thumbnail design. It takes a lot of time. I haven't really been sleeping. I haven't really been taking care of myself or, or eating for the most part. And it's pretty mentally draining just to try and figure out how things work. Also with uh, the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of your content, it'll flop. Nobody's gonna care about it. But maybe the 20 videos or 20% 20 of your videos, they'll hit and then they'll rise up the videos that flop. Just be patient and have consistency, have a drive and a vision of where you wanna go in life. I was trying to figure out what kinds of videos should I create. I noticed in the past that when I did fitness videos, those normally did okay. When I did a couple car videos of how to do certain things such as change oil or adjust your headlights, my reviews on the cars that I had, whether I modified them, I kept them stock or not, those did pretty good. And just looking at the, the YouTube channel homepage of the things that I'm interested in, maybe I could just grab the titles and talk about those kinds of things. So for example, for this one, the first one it says, how much YouTube paid me in the first six months of being monetized. And there's a plugin that's called Social Blade of how you could see how much money they're making. And when, once you see these numbers, these analytics, you're not necessarily going to want to consume their content because why, why am I giving away my time, attention, and resources to somebody when I could be a provider or producer and try and uh, capture audience for myself? Just say, for example, for this person, Matera made jewelry, right? I got monetized November 8th. Let's see how much she's making. She's making between $43 and rounded off to 700 per video. It's, it's software real estate. It's digital real estate. Obviously you're under the umbrella of YouTube and you have to follow their guidelines. And uh, this guy's pretty cool too. I, I like him a lot. Chez Kenter. He has a lot of fitness videos. I, I like his mindset. I resonate with him. My personality is similar to him. He was talking about fitness and uh, dropping programs. But if, if you're just consistent with the things that he does, he has over 300 videos on how to work out. He fought professionally. He's a father. He's relatable. He's more of an introvert type. I am too. I normally don't talk a lot, but I listened to his video, a half an hour video of him just talking and 
that it was interesting. I, I like his content a lot, and I think that you, I would just need to find the people that are like me. I can't necessarily force everybody to to want to like me or to be like me. I think for me in general, the main reason why I didn't talk a lot was because I grew up without my mother. She left when I was six months old. My dad, he didn't necessarily treat her properly. She left, she never came back. And I think that it was the other half of my life that I was gone. And I, I didn't talk a lot. I didn't express my emotions. And I was thinking that if you have a lot of pain when you're growing up without your parent, you have a limited mindset. You're not going to grow if you're in the shadow. It, it, it hurt me to the point where I, I just didn't want to be seen. I didn't tell people my name. I didn't want to get close to people. It's not good for, for growth. It's not good for social aspect because you don't grow up with communication skills. People will think you're awkward. And just because you grew up like that, it doesn't mean that you have to stay on that low level. Uh, you you are worthy. Certain people, they're not supposed to be in your life. And if you believe in fate, have faith in fate that things play out the way they're supposed to. Sometimes when you're going through struggles in your life, you're, you're asking, why? Why did this happen to me? But when, when you look back at previous events, for example, for me, I grew up without my mother. It gave me drive not to stay in Syracuse, New York, not to stay in a poor, broken mindset. I went to university. I got to meet a lot of people. So, for example, my fraternity brothers, I love them. But most people, you're not necessarily going to connect with them. You're only going to connect with a few amount of close people, close people that you're tight with. And it's better that you have, you know, 10, 10 people that you're close with or five people that you're close with versus 500 that are superficial, they're skin deep. Though so those five people that I consider close, I consider them my brothers, my family. They're more close to me than my blood family. Unfortunately, and I, I tried to be close to my blood family, but I just didn't work out. I used to be embarrassed to tell people that I wasn't close with my mother, my father, my brother, because normally when you go on dates and those kinds of things, they would ask you those kinds of questions. You attract mirrors of yourself. You you would attract a similar person, the good and the bad. And I, I was always self-conscious about, oh, these people, they're judging me. Maybe I, I should tell them only the good things so that they could stay, but as you get older, you realize you like me or you don't. And if you don't like me, it's all good. That you have the freedom to come and go as you will. Look at if, at the other person's point of view. That they're free to accept you and you're free to accept them. That you, you wouldn't want them to stay in your life if they it's not something that they want. I was also thinking that he... He changes, Chaz, he changes subjects throughout his life. Sometimes he would get bored with certain things. And it could be good or bad because you can be a jack of all trades or you can be a specialist in one field. And I noticed that, for example, in, in work, maybe I would stick around for two or three years and I knew it would be on to the next. That's just how it worked out. Um, I went on a date and then somebody said, she said, do you get bored easily? Because she saw my LinkedIn. <laughs> they do background investigations on you before they go out with you. And I said, it depends on the topic. It depends on the subject. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And I think for, for her point of view, they want stability. And she wants somebody that is consistent, that will stick around, that provide resources. But uh, from my point of view, it's kind of, for example, if you cage the bird, it's restricting to the animal. That's why I would say, leave the door open. Leave the cage door open, leave the door, your door open. If the bird comes back, they want to stay. If they don't come back, they're not interested in it. That, that's how I, I would feel in general. 
There's other videos on YouTube where they're creating stress. For example, the, the economy is bad. But if you focus on those kinds of things, that's what will come into your life. If you live in fear, it's not good. Because just say, for example, if I... If I, if I told my teacher, I, I would rather delete than be poor as an adult. And I meant it then and I mean it now that the, that kind of life that I had when I was a kid, it's not acceptable for me. And that's why I would push to try and bring myself up to be successful. Do, do I think that I'm successful? I, I think that I'm an average person. I'm, I'm no better than anyone else. I have my struggles, I have my problems. Problems don't go away just because you're older or just because you follow religion or your practices that I, I could fall in a week, I can fall in a day. I recently went running and I fell, I tripped and I fell. Nothing was broken, it just, I just got some scrapes. But these are things that I'm, I'm an average person. It's good to be humble. How can I stay hungry and be content? Because you should count your blessings. I always thought that uh, people didn't like me because I was Asian. I got made fun of. I got bullied when I was a kid. They called me chink. I got water bottles thrown at me. I, I was pushed, spit on, stuff like that. I always got into fights at least one time every year when I was in elementary to middle school. And I said... Oh, they don't like me because I'm Asian. My name, I always hated it. Fung. Because nobody can really pronounce it. They can't even spell a six-letter word, which is annoying. It's probably why I never introduced myself. I didn't necessarily have the confidence to do it. But I, I didn't love myself. I, I just didn't have it. From If you're Asian and you grew up in Asian culture, you would know that. Uh, they don't necessarily say I love you. They, they're not compassionate to their kids in that way. But with that being said, I would say my dad, he took care of me. He, he made sure I had a roof on in my head. He made sure that I had food to eat. So I can't necessarily say I, I can't really be angry at my parents because I would have to understand how they grew up, what their range is and just have compassion and understanding for them and also have it for yourself and to learn to love yourself because nobody could give you self-love. If you don't love yourself, you, you won't act in accordance to how you, you act, how you feel about yourself, essentially. And I, I could say I love myself, but then if, if I'm not taking care of myself, if I'm smoking, if I'm drinking, if I'm doing bad behaviors that are putting me at risk, then this is proof. And why do we do what we do when we know what we know is because we do what we learned from our parents, our past, our history, our culture. Sometimes I will think, oh, wow, why did they treat me like that, you know, when I was a kid? And may maybe I attracted it. Maybe what, what I thought was normal at the time, it was incorrect. Uh, I wasn't accepted. As, as an Asian person in general, I think that I, if you looked at me, would you think that I'm American? Um, am I American? Was I born here? Some people, well, whatever your answer is, I was born in Syracuse, New York. I've never been to China or Vietnam. I don't speak the language. I do eat the food. <laughs> the food's way better than American food, in my opinion, because the palate is whiter. But it's not necessarily what other people think about you. It's what you think about yourself. Don't necessarily judge your own book by other people's views, because just say, for example, how much would you pay for a bottle of water? Dollar, two dollars. What if you're in an airport? How much would you pay? Five to ten dollars? What if you're in the desert and you were dying of thirst? You'd probably cut your whole fingers off, all of your fingers. You cut them off just to get a drink of water.
Um, to, to have self-value for yourself is the most important part of your life. You, you have value when you were born. The chances of you being born are way greater than you your chances of winning the lottery again struck by lightning. I always said that I'll, I'm a short person, right? But I'm, I'm focusing on it. I'm five, six and a half. I wasn't attracted to myself because I, I thought that I was ugly because of my eyes or my skin or, or whatever. It, it was it was based on social standards. I'm, I'm not a six foot guy. I don't have a six pack abs. I don't have a 600 horsepower car and I'm not six inches down. But here you use what you have and imagine, for example, my voice. One guy said, I hate my voice. I don't like my voice. And I was thinking the same thing before. I, I don't like my voice. But maybe it's because I don't talk enough to develop the skills. And I did go to Toastmasters to try and develop my speaking skills. I was thinking, how can I speak more like the elders in the group? How can I speak more, be more articulate like the other women in the group? And I learned that I joined that group, the Toastmasters group to learn how to speak to myself to be more kind. Because just say, for example, if I drop something on the floor, I would say, oh, you're an idiot. Why did you do that? But in actuality, everybody makes mistakes. That's how you learn. Why, why, why be so harsh on yourself? My dad, he was always harsh on me. Um, I, I wasn't the favorite son, I was the middle son. And your birth order, it could determine whether you're favored or not, whether your roles that you have if, if you're the first son, you're your favorite and you get more responsibility. If you're the, the middle child, you were the baby at the time. But the, the baby always gets, they normally get more attention. Maybe they get a softer life because the parents, they, they learn as they go of how to treat a child. I never had kids because I never wanted to risk Repeating the cycle, the, the way I grew up wasn't ideal and it, it hurt me pretty bad. Sometimes when I still think about it, I'll, I'll have to pause and I'll have to wait because I'm, I'm speechless at the time. I got a chance to meet up with my mother when I was 39. The story behind it was she left when I was six months. She never came back. I, I went to academy. I got a chance to meet my, my boy, martial arts instructor. I had to re-qualify for the certification. I got a chance to meet my friend. He helped me. He was a background investigator. He helped me 10 years later to find her. I asked, I, I asked my dad for the divorce papers, and, uh, and I was always wondering why, when she left. She left when I was six months old. Well, when I read the papers, I, I had to pause. I, I couldn't speak because it hurt. And I, I gave the social security number, the last address, and, and I knew the name. That if, if, her, if that was her name, that was her. I, I reached out to her via text, and, and I said, I sent her a picture. I'm your son. I, I hope you're doing good. Um, if you want to see me, let me know. She reached back out, and then I had a chance to to talk to her. Initially, she didn't want to. She didn't want to uh, meet up with me or really communicate, and it's because she felt fear from my father. She didn't had a lot of pain in the past. I learned that uh, her parents were distant from her. And then in certain cultures, they don't necessarily treat the women properly. They they favor the son. And I, I don't necessarily think that that's right because it's pretty painful for her. I, I understand as to why she didn't come back. I, I don't hold hate in my heart for her. There's too much pain that I, I don't have the capacity to, to keep it in my heart. What you focus on is what you will get. 
um, just have uh, have try and understand, have compassion, kindness for yourself, your family, your past. Um, imagine you were talking to another person, your friend. You wouldn't necessarily be harsh to that person the way you are to yourself, and it's easy to give advice to other people because you're not necessarily doing the work. Maybe you are following the practices, but oh, always be kind to, to people. I, I always said that I, I don't necessarily want people to be nice to me because it's not necessarily honest. I would rather you be straight up and honest with me. Obviously, you can use specific words or say certain things in certain ways. But looking back, sometimes where you're going in life, whether it's a struggle or not, it's necessary for you to be training. It's necessary for you to be going in that direction because uh, one, one door closes and another one opens. And if you have faith, if you're religious, you believe in God or the universe, that they, they will help and guide you, even if you can't see it as to why. You're meeting these certain people, these certain angels, that if, if you can have an open heart and life isn't black and white, there is no right or wrong, that you can get to your destination however you want to do it. Sometimes when, when you meet certain people, that they could be instrumental to you 10 years from now. You, you never know that. Maybe I went to nursing school so that I could connect with somebody and maybe they'll save my life. I don't know, but I, I did go to nursing school and I thought that financially it was a big mistake. It cost me a lot of money and time, opportunity costs. But it, it sunk me so low, I got super depressed. I was at my lowest point, I wasn't taking care of myself. My relationship dissolved at the time. Always be accountable for the things that you're doing. You don't control other people. You can't force people to stay in your life. And maybe sometimes you have to be selfish with your time to be able to, to go to certain places. Some people like to travel to Italy or um, I recently went to Japan. It was cool, but I, I want to travel to a mental place where I'm at peace. I have bliss. It's not necessarily a physical place that I want to go to. There are times when you're training and you have to be alone. You don't have the time, the capacity to, to spread yourself then. When, when you're dividing your time, whether or not it's taking care of a family member, a friend, or a position, or a hobby, or whatever it is, the, the acquisition matrix is if you spend one hour a day to try and get down the basics, it would take you three months to master the basics. But if you spend four hours a day on that one task, it probably take you about a month. It depends on how how fast you want to get there, and how bad you want it. But if you're if you're focused on many different things, you're just going to be a jack of all trades. You're not necessarily going to be special and one thing. And it depends on what you value at the time. And going back to speaking, I don't think that I need to be the best speaker because most people they're not good speakers. If you, if you think of the bell curve, there's low, middle, and then high. But if, if you're only catering to the, the best speakers or you're trying to get to the be the best dancer, you're only going to cater to uh, those kinds of people and those pools, in my opinion. It depends on what, what your objective is or your attention. I was also thinking that uh, one person, she said, Oh, you should, you should be nicer to people. But in, in my opinion, it's the intention that you have of why you're saying it. When I was in college, after I crossed a brother from Binghamton, he said, you're fat, look at your stomach. And I was 185. I wasn't working out anymore. I went from 160 shredded to 185. I was eating buffet style all the time. And it hurt when he said it. I said, I was in denial. <laughs> I said, I, I just hate. That's why my stomach looks like that. And then he said, no, you're, you're fat. Look at your stomach. 
And he, he was right. Uh, I, I appreciated it because it's the intentions behind what he was saying. He, he knew that I, I wasn't that person, that I, I let myself go. And after that, I started to get into better shape. I started to work out. I started to make better food choices. Recently, I've been eating steak, ground beef, fish, shrimp, broccoli, fruits, such as strawberries, berries. There was a point when I was tracking my macros. That's a lot of work, but if, if you're eating foods, on, make sure you don't make the food taste too good because then you'll overeat. But it's, it's harder to overeat on steaks and berries and, and shrimp and broccoli because the, the food, it's, it can be dense and satiating. Oh, a hack is uh, good egg whites so that you don't have to crack each egg. I was also thinking that if you're so busy, why am I using my time to cook or clean or to do my laundry? Or I, I see some people walking their dogs. Maybe, maybe it makes them happy, but I, I have zero interest in picking up dog, dog poop or taking care of them. I, I was gifted goldfish, but I figure, why don't I just give them away to somebody who can give them attention and love them and appreciate them? Because I, I don't feel that I was giving enough time and attention to them. I was seeing some people on YouTube where they, they would record rain sounds. It doesn't rain that often in California. But what, what if I just recorded my a fish tank and then it makes water noises. And then I could say sleeping with goldfish. Technically, you can make that kind of video every day. And maybe it would pop over time. Who, who knows? I was thinking about what kinds of niches that I should do. Technically... Your niches come from your YouTube algorithm. So I'm into working out. I'm into finances. This guy, make money with Matt. He's pretty successful. He made 3K per month when he was 14. He made 30K when he was 18. When he retired, he was making more money than his mother and father combined. I think by the time he was 20, he was a millionaire already. He, he has his freedom. He enjoys the things that he does. He's an entrepreneur, clean cut kid. When, when I was a kid, I, I, I started working when I was 13. I could have fixed my teeth, but I didn't because I didn't value my teeth. I didn't value myself, but your teeth, it can affect your smile, which can affect your confidence. It's, uh, it's one of the best things that you can invest in. If you could think about it, your skincare, your, your teeth, your shoes, your fashion, how you carry yourself. You, you are your own avatar. However you want to look, however you want to feel, that you could, you could be that person. It just takes time to do. And we'll work with what you have. Appreciate yourself, love yourself, because nobody else can do it for you. If you were playing a video game, well, would you want to be the fit guy or the fastest car? Or would you want to be the, the lower version of yourself? Don't worry about what other people are thinking or saying or thinking about you. Uh, be on your own journey. Get clear of what you want and how you're going to be able to do it. Be successful. Sometimes when you're consistent, it's good. Because if you're consistent with working out, with finances, you'll be good later on. Versus if you're trying to get a quick fix or to do it as fast as possible, you can't force people to be in your life. If you approach other women, you can't force them to to want to be with you. Just be yourself. You you attract who is supposed to be there. Be the best version of who you are. Try to control the things that you can't control. Focus on your, your work ethic, your sleep, your diet, your exercise, your education, your hygiene, the basics. And technically, I was thinking, I don't like salesmen when I'm walking through the mall. But technically, you are your own salesman. You are your own company, your body. It takes work to manage how, how you look, how you feel, it reflects on your beliefs and your practices every day. 
right now I'm, I'm i wasn't focused on those kinds of things and that's why i look the way i look i don't look that good maybe there's 32 days 31 days to summer put yourself on a timer give yourself goals whether it's weekly goals monthly goals shoot for what you want don't necessarily let for example youtube consume your life because uh, you need to figure out how to optimize all areas of your life but even if i spent four hours consuming YouTube to try and learn how to do it. I shouldn't let my fitness and my diet go, my sleep go, because it deteriorates your life. Everything in life is a trade-off. Don't don't live your life based off of fear. Live it off desire, because if you if you're living it off fear, you're focused on the fear. I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be in a mental stump. I want to grow. I want I want to focus on positives. I want to be rich. I want to have my freedom. I want to be intelligent. I want to be able to help people later on in life. I was thinking, why was I granted this life? It's not that good, but in actuality, I was born in the new United States. Maybe I was born to help other people. I have my physical abilities. I can move around. I can walk. I used to work in a healthcare system. I took care of people who they couldn't think, they couldn't talk, they couldn't walk. And it will humble you if you had to take care of somebody because then you would appreciate your abilities, the freedoms that you have when you live in this country. There's a lot of people that they're super entitled and they think that they should get things without working for them. They want free stuff. It doesn't make sense that if you if you could work for your stuff that you would value or you would it would mean more and just say for example if, if you lived in a house with your family and you're not paying the bills you're not gonna care about it you know, you're not gonna use the water efficiently but if, if you were paying the water bill you know, you'd probably think about it and not not be wasteful or Maybe if you could get to such a high point that you're not even worried about these kinds of things, you're worried about um, the, the next challenges that pro will propel you later on in life. That's why you, you shouldn't necessarily focus on fears. I'm not saying be oblivious to them. Obviously, no. Be aware of what you're doing, where you are. For example, in martial arts, I thought that Oh, then I can be choked out with my jacket. So should I never wear a jacket? No. <laughs> Just be aware that these things can happen and do the training every day to be strong because that that's one of the common traits of a man, in my opinion, that you should be strong, train every day so that you could be strong, so that you could defend yourself. It will give you more confidence. If you look weak, Animals will prey on you. And in my opinion, humans were in the animal kingdom. The, these kinds of laws, they, they've been around since the beginning of time. You, you are special and unique, but your problems may be the same problems that Adam and Eve had. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I worried a lot when I was young. And I, I wondered... Oh, what, what would it be like when I'm older? I, I also wondered when I was in high school, I said, <laughs> if I was a post office worker making 50K, and at the time, that's that's pretty good money, right? I, I would be happy, I would be content, but uh, when you get older, your targets are moving. And you you always want to reach for more. And, and it's good to, to try and improve at your level, at your time. <laughs> You know, when you're young, you don't worry about older problems because your body is efficient. It's running optimally, but I'll be 42 later this year and I have to pay attention to what I eat, the sleep that I'm getting because it affects my my processes, my quality of life. Sometimes when you're in school or if you're at work or you're thinking about YouTube, you're thinking people don't necessarily want to hear you or they don't necessarily want to see you. But if you think that you're not trying to grab everyone's attention because not everyone's going to be your friend, 
there's different radio stations and different frequencies for different kinds of people. Some people like reggaeton, some people like R&B, some people like country music. I'll, I'll listen to almost anything. It depends on the mood. And, and in terms of being a, a liberal or a conservative, it depends on the topic, right? So yeah, just be you, be, be the authentic self of you. If you if you don't have your freedom of speech, it, it could be restrictive. And it, it is cool to let loose sometimes to, to be able to say what's on your mind. That's why when, when people get together with their friends, they, they just talk about the things that they want to talk about. Obviously, if, if you're in a public setting, maybe you want to be a little bit more reserved. But in, in terms of getting ideas of your YouTube channel, I think that this could be an idea because technically I'm not really copywriting other than using their thumbnails. I'm just showing their thumbnails. This next one is uh, top 30 niches to make money on YouTube without showing your face. This guy's pretty legitimate. He gets to the point. He doesn't show fluff and I, I like his style because he knows what he's talking about. He's articulate. He, sh he shows uh, how-tos on, on how to get certain things or, or how to do certain processes. The next one is uh, eight signs that they're not your friends. I, I like the thumbnail, the text that pops out. So for example, for friends, right? You, you could test people. Just say, for example, when I was in school, I, I would say, uh, can I borrow a pencil as a test? And I don't even need a pencil. Or <laughs> can I can I buy your work for a quarter? I did that when I was a kid. And then if, if they help you, they, they want to help you. If they if they don't want to help you, that's all good. You know, it's on to the next. But your friends, they could be based on your environment, whether you're in school or work, or a certain, if you're in a city. But if, if you remove yourself from that environment, school, work, or your location, are they still going to be your friend? Maybe, maybe not. There are certain friends that they're, they're there for you and certain friends, they're not necessarily in your daily lives. It depends on what your metric is. Maybe my good friend, he lives in Pacifica. It's about an hour away. I maybe see him three to four times. And I have another friend, he lives in Oakland. Maybe I see him once a year, but uh, when, when I do see him <laughs> that once a year, I, I love it. I, I love talking to him. I, I love being around him because I, I click with him. He, he's understanding. He's cool. He, he has good ideas and, and we're pretty similar. So bird, birds of feather, birds of a similar feather flock together. There, there's one online community. I, I met one of my friends in Pismo Beach and we, we just connected. I, I like action takers, people that they, if, if, you, if you bounce an idea off of them, they're they either ready to go or they're not ready to go. This next guy, men have finally woken up. What is it about? I have no clue because I didn't watch the video, but I was thinking how you think when you're a kid, it may not necessarily be the correct way because if you haven't lived those experiences, then you don't really know. But this guy, he has a lot of experiences in his area. He's really smart. He's entertaining. I, I like his channel a lot. I could probably, I could binge his content all day. But going going back to that, that why, why am I going to binge his content when I could try to make my own? Or if you wanted to learn about these kinds of relationships that you can learn from him, they have a lot of other kinds of people. There's different people for other audiences. So if you think that, oh, there's already a channel and the niche that, I, that you want to do, Maybe a, a certain person will resonate with you and that's why you should try it out. Why not? And it's always better to try things and fail than to not. Um, are you willing to make 100 cold calls to get three to five sales? If you, if you, if you say no, then you're not going to get the successes. But just know that the failure rate is high to get those small successes, the small wins. There was a quote, I was listening to Denzel Washington, and he said, uh, Jackie Robinson, he has the most strikeouts in history. And if you focus on strikeouts, you could think, oh, 
he's a loser, right? But he has the most home runs. He had people who remember the home runs, they remember the championships, the Michael Jordans, the that quarterback who he, he played for the the Boston team. Boston Patriots, I can't think of his name. He was married to Giselle. Comment down below what his name is. But yeah, just, just try do do your best and, and forget the rest. Don't, don't worry about the, the little stuff. Things will work out in the end. Things happen for a reason. All right, the next one is M3 Max MacBook Pro 30 days later. I recently, throughout the YouTube course, I had a 2018 MacBook Pro. It was top spec at the time, Intel chip. It was lagging. And when I did the exports and the uploads to YouTube, it wasn't good enough. It, it, it would just crash. It would stop working. And I, would, I was thinking, why don't I, I buy an M3 Max 14 inch? 16 inch I used it I felt it's all right the exports real slow and then I went from the air the MacBook Air and then I have an M3 Max with the 128 gigabytes of RAM and the 8 terabytes of storage the export it's pretty much the same maybe it's 30 seconds quicker but it's it's 30 seconds per export worth five grand not really but um, i have this laptop and i don't want to guess that's why i always buy the top tier stuff even if i know i don't need it that i don't want to guess whether or not i got the the correct stuff or not some people like windows some people they like max all right these are shorts i didn't really get into shorts the courses they don't necessarily promote shorts because you need to get a thousand subscribers or 500 subscribers or something. You need 4,000 hours of watch time on your videos or 10 million views. This first one, Dance with JC. I was trying to learn bachata. They're probably doing salsa. But it, it's more about if you like the teacher, you like the environment, it's good for social settings to go out there to meet people to try to do it because then you'll, you'll learn how your body works and all of that. I was thinking, how, how can I become good dancers like that? It's you put in the time, you have to do it every day and I wasn't doing it every day. I recently stopped going to dancing because I've been focused on YouTube thing. I took a week off to, to learn the course to try and learn all of the new technologies and then I saw that. I woke up, I saw the possibilities of the different technologies. And if you're doing the same things every single day, your eyes are kind of closed, but if you are if you try new experiences, it, it's good for you because then you, you have a more wider range and scope. I was also thinking that women in general, they mature three to four years earlier than men, than boys. So just say for example, a freshman woman, she has more experience than a senior man, or it could be comparable. But for sure, women, they get more experiences and exposures up front. They're different. Versus if you're a man, Brandon Carter, you, you have to create your own value. He's successful, he's fit, he's shredded, he's articulate, he's confident. I, I like his channel a lot. There are three videos that I was watching to prime my brain to try and get into better shape. And he was talking about tracking, being consistent, cause he's, he's a trainer, right? That if you're not consistent, you'll get frustrated. And that's why I was yo-yoing. Last year during the holidays, the first quarter of this year, rating celebrities, I don't really care about it, but how would you rate yourself on, on a scale of one to 10? And what are the metrics of how you would rate yourself. I remember being at the airport and there's one guy, he would say, uh, nah, nine at checkout, nine at checkout. And he, he was talking about a person and he was ranking that person and giving the location up. I thought it was funny. This next one, uh, Mazda Miata. I used to have a Mazda Miata. I modified it, fun car. I had an RX-7, that's the best car I've ever driven because it's raw, powerful, it's iconic, but 
when I had to fix it, it was a pain because it's a complicated vehicle. Uh, if I didn't modify my Miata, the engine wouldn't have blown at 90,000 miles. I, I recently got a ticket. I was doing a, he said I was doing 120 and a 65 on a 101 and I, I got a ticket for 112. I, I ordered ticket crushers. The retainer was uh, 750. Went to court. They lowered my my fine to from I think it was nine bills to seven fifty. I had to report it. My insurance will most likely increase for the next few years. They didn't suspend my license, and I I wasn't eligible for traffic school. So I'm on the bright side. I, I didn't get the bracelets put on me. I didn't get a a, a charge. So. I was thinking that, that that officer was an angel. He, he was respectful when he talked to me and he pretty much said that if, if you're in this little car, that car probably weighed 2,300 pounds. If, if I wrecked at that speed, I'd be dead already. Or, or I would kill somebody. It, it's good that I just I decided to sell the car because at the time I, I blew the, the transmission that I, I was driving it and I put the clutch in and then I, I took the clutch out and then I tried to shift it into second gear. And that's when the transmission, it blew. Well, whatever happened. And then I, I just decided, you know, I'm, I'm wasting so much time and energy on this vehicle, even though it is fun, it's addicting, it's a drug that I should get rid of it. I felt that it was God's way of telling me, get rid of it. You, it's not good for you. Cause I, I noticed that when I had an Apple Watch, when I would be driving, my heart rate would spike to 120, 130. It's not good for, for that to happen because your eyes, they have delicate capillaries, your ears too. And if, if your your heart pressure is too high, it's not good. It damages them. And then when, when you're getting older, your vision starts to go down. So you're trying to preserve what you have. Get, get your glasses, your eyes checked. So. The next one, Rose, if you want to be a millionaire, I was thinking, how, how can I make more money? How can I gain my freedom? I, I like her content because she's doing what she wants to do. She's really, really intelligent. She was uh, living out of a van at, at some point in her life. She bought property in the US. She bought property in uh, Mexico City. I was thinking, sh should I try to move to Mexico because to retire in California, I would need about a million invested versus maybe if I was in Mexico, you need a third to half of that. It just depends, but I don't speak Spanish very well. I took Spanish in high school, college. I tried to learn it for a year, but I wasn't as consistent. Maybe it, it's a target that I'll try and hit later on in life. Uh, maybe I'll try and be more religious or religious later on in life. This next one, Uncommon Sense, Fast and Easy Weight Loss, The Secret. What is the secret? That's how they try and get you to click on their video. You could see that he has a lot of views. It's 11 times his normal view count. I, I like the picture, the text, it pops out because it, it has good contrast, the, the white and the black border around the text it shows him not in shape not shredded versus him shredded it's easier to, to track your macros than you can't out train a bad diet so just keep that in mind the, the secret for me in general is if i i didn't watch this video but just be consistent work on your sleep don't do bad behaviors try not to drink calories if you can because just say for example if, if i if i drink orange juice right how many oranges are in that juice probably five to ten you're not going to eat five to ten oranges and just say for example if you ate one orange there's fiber in it it's not a, a sugar spike because just say for example if you think of fiber as the orange skin, the orange peel, it, it takes me time to take the peel off unless I'm just going to eat it straight up. 
I forgot to put on my Invisalign trays, but that that's how it is that it would take your body time to to take the fiber off of it and to be able to process it versus uh, sugar. If, if I'm eating sugar, your body, it doesn't need time to process it because it's at its most basic level. Your body is just going to spike. It's going to consume it right away. There's better choices of things that you can eat. Our banana is bad. Maybe if you're eating a whole bushel of them, but there are better choices such as blueberries, strawberries. Some people say you, you should only eat carnivore or you should only do this, this and that, but here you figure out what works for you and well, what you want, what makes you happy. Sometimes those can conflict. Chances and more conversation with leads. I have no idea what he's talking about. I, I, I like people to get to the point of what they're trying to, to talk about. This guy gets to the point, Brandon Carter, are your friends holding you back? It's possible. And I might think that whoever you associate with is who you're going to be. If you associate with people that aren't going in your direction, they could be anchors in your life. For example, your your mother, your father, if they're not if they're not supporting you, then you would have to either cut out time with them or, or get rid of them. Cut cut out cut them out completely. Same thing with friends, same thing with other people in your lives. If if they don't benefit you, doesn't matter if they're your woman, whatever. Sometimes you would have to get rid of them. Brutally Brutally honest dating advice to young men. This needs to stop before you're 30 and miserable. You don't necessarily want to uh, to get trapped in what someone else wants to do. Always have a clear vision of what you want. And it's not necessarily you being selfish because it's your life. And it should be an agreement with both people and their relationship of where you want to go. If you're trying to follow somebody else, you might not be genuine to yourself, your own dreams. Don't be so loyal to somebody that you're not loyal to yourself. This is Bachata. They dance pretty good. Is this Joe Rogan? I'm not sure. I think this is Fresh and Fit. I'll smack you fake alpha male tries to foul and intimidate. Just say, for example, for, for labels... I always said don't necessarily say I'm an introvert. It depends on the situation because depending on who I'm around, I, I could speak to you easily and I won't necessarily be an introvert. If I was at a car show, I, I will go walk up to, even at a gas station, I'll walk up to this guy and I'll ask him, oh, you know, your, your car is cool. Can you tell me about it? Uh, what what gave you the inspiration to style it the way that it is? Like, why, why did you do certain things like the carbon fiber trim? And it's good to, to try and connect with people that have similar interests to you because it, it'll make you happy. You're not going to be worried about other insecurities, those kinds of things. You're, you're just going to go to to be happy, to do the things that you want. She thought she could be Dr. House. I'm not sure what that's about. But V12 Mazda Miata. This is something that I would be interested in because I, I like cars. I had that car before. I had full bolt-ons on it, supercharger. I had the exhaust on it, the Olin suspension. I had the tires. I had wider tires in the back. If you're modifying your car, make sure you build out the suspension components first and get the tires down because if you're adding power, it's not going to be able to handle it on a stock suspension. Calisthenics, these parallettes, I bought them last year. They're pretty cheap. Maybe they're 20, 30 bucks. They're probably the best equipment that, that I bought. I normally use parallettes, polar bar, uh, jump rope. You don't necessarily need equipment to get a good workout in. You can do calisthenics. You can go to the, the park. You can run in place. You could do jump rope. Back to the, the first guy, Chaz, I like him a lot because he's straight to the point. He does like a lot of shadow boxing, up, a lot of fighting techniques. He said that if you did his kinds of workouts every day, you would be shredded. It doesn't matter 
uh, necessarily what you're doing. As long as you're doing it consistently, you're deserving, you're worth it. It's all it's all your mindset. You put in the work and you, you can do anything that you want. This country has the most beautiful women. What country is it? He's making you want to click on it because he's making you wonder why. Which country has the most beautiful women? It doesn't matter in my opinion. There's beautiful people all over the place. Some people could say, oh, because he's Chinese, blah, blah, blah. But you, you can be a Chinese person and you could be a good person or you cannot be a good person. It depends on the metrics. And don't necessarily take people's word for it. You'll figure it out on your own whether or not this person resonates with you or not or whether they do or they don't. A weighted vest. I used to have a weighted vest back in the days to work out. I didn't really use it. And the pockets, they were kind of ripped, so I had to reinforce it. I sold it eventually. Maybe I'll get back into it. But I, I could carry a couple dumbbells when I walk during a farmer's carry. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. M1 Max versus M3 Max comparison. Like I said, it's probably a one or two minute difference per processes, but if, if you're running a lot of different processes at the time, it might make a difference. Mike Thurston, uh, five underrated tips to losing belly fat. This guy's interesting too, Dr. Diamond, because he, he has high education status and then he pairs it with a common problem that men have is uh, trying to get shredded. I think how, how you look one day, it doesn't necessarily determine the overall results, but well, what you're doing overall, it could determine how you look over the long run. These guys are, they're pretty peaked and what they're doing, they built a brand around it. It's something that I, I could try and shoot for in the future. We'll see. But well, what are five tips that I could think of off the top of my head? Uh, be consistent with your workouts. Work out every day or, you know, even on rest days, you, you could be light. My battery is almost running out, so uh, when, when it runs out, that's when the video would end. But your sleep, your diet, yeah, who you associate with, make sure you're eating real foods, don't drink calories. Try and reduce your stress, those kinds of things. You could get trackers to track your weight, such as a scale. He made a secret YouTube channel to prove it's not luck. This looks like an interesting video. I like the thumbnail. This is interesting too, peaceful uh, audio music. And he has Superman in the background. Make everything personal. Become disciplined and easy. Discipline is easy actually. When you're first doing things in the beginning, they could be hard because there's a lot of friction, but uh, when you get used to it, when you get good at it, it can be easier. But just know that month mode, it's a lot of work for, for you to do. All right. Uh, that's my random rant on YouTube. I hope you guys had a good time. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.